Good day, people. My name is Dr. Ike Chuku Emmanuel Obi. I am the chairman of the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, Enugu State Chapter. If there is ever a time when we should take rats on exile and invite the cats and give them a red carpet treatment, that time is now. The reason why we're saying this is because we have a strange disease amongst us, and that strange disease is Lassa fever. Lassa fever is a viral hemorrhagic fever. And one thing that is dangerous about it is that you can think that you are suffering from the common causes of fever around us, but suddenly everything will change. How does it change? Somebody can think everything is okay. And then in no time, what you will suddenly see is blood, blood, blood coming from everywhere. The incubation period, which is the time from the contact with Lassa fever and the onset of the symptoms, it can be one week to three weeks. Meaning that for a week or, two, or three weeks, you can be walking around treating common causes of fever and not knowing that you are carrying this deadly disease. Imagine the impact on your family. Imagine the impact on people around you. Suddenly, from thinking you have a fever, the person can start to bleed from every single part of the body. It can be vomiting blood, it can be passing blood in urine, it can be passing blood in stool, and then from other parts of the body you can have blood coming out. The face can swell up, and then the person has get, gotten into an emergency situation. At such times, that person needs to be isolated and managed with proper universal precautions as can only be practiced in a hospital. I must tell you, it is a dangerous disease. How is it transmitted? Lassa fever can move or Lassa fever infects people or comes into the human community through an infected rat. The way it does this is that the infected rat can pass feces and urine on your food or on your kitchenware. When it does this, human contact with this feces and urine will cause the infection of Lassa fever. And when the person is infected, the person can transmit this from himself to another person through the normal and natural body fluids. When we have said normal and natural body fluids, the person's own blood, the person's own urine, person's own feces. And I must warn you, it also means that sexual contact for transmitting Lassa fever is also possible. If this condition comes, Managing it can be an uneasy process, I must tell you. And it has been said that even if the person survives, one out of four cases may end up being deaf. May end up being deaf. So, how can we avoid this Lassa fever? The best things to do are simple. Good personal hygiene and good community hygiene. For personal hygiene, wash your hands properly and regularly. Properly and regularly. For environmental hygiene, keep your environment as clean and as rat-free as possible. And please, this is a time for us to say this. It is better that you implement and deploy every anti-rat device or strategy that you have around you to keep the rats away. Take note, the message here is, a rat in your neighborhood is a rat in your house. A word is enough for the wise. Current statistics that we are having as we are doing this video now include that we have over a hundred suspected cases in the country, in all the states of the country, scattered in different states in the country. There are 61 confirmed cases. As we are speaking right now, there are 16 deaths. Of these 16 deaths, 10 of them are health workers. Ask yourself, if health workers are affected, what about you? Prevention is better than cure, as they say. Please stay safe. This is a message from the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, Enugu State Chapter. From the Biomedical Communication Center, College of Medicine, University of Nigeria, it took us on our campus in partnership with our production team coming from David Alpha Productions, DAP TV. Thank you and remain safe.